this application, I have three different models. There are articles, which you see listed here, and there are photos, and there are events. Now, what I would like to do is give the user the ability to add comments to any one of these types of models. So articles, photos, and events. One option is to create a separate comment model for each type. So we would have an event comment model, photo comments, article comments, and so on. But that's a lot of work and duplication, especially because comments should all have the same behavior and attributes. So if you're ever faced with a situation where you need one model to belong to different types of other models, consider using a polymorphic association. Let me show you how that works. So for this application, I'm going to generate one model called comment and give it a content column with a text type. Now to set up a polymorphic association, you have to ask yourself, what do all the other models that this needs to relate to have in common? In this case, they're all commentable. So we need to add two more columns into this to set up a polymorphic association, and I'll call it commentable ID, and make that an integer, and commentable type, and that will be a string type column. And I'll run this to generate the files. Now here's the migration file that was generated, and the way this works is that the name of the class is stored in the commentable type column, so Rails can use that in combination with the ID to determine which record this comment is associated with. Now because these two columns are often queried together, you may want to add an index for them, and you can do so by calling add index, comments table, and then add it to both the commentable ID and commentable type columns. One more thing I want to show you here in the migrations is that a polymorphic association can also be specified another way by calling belongs to commentable here and then setting polymorphic to true. And that will generate those ID and type columns for you. So now I can run the migrations here to generate that table. Next, I need to go into the generated comment model and add in a belongs to association for commentable and set the polymorphic option to true. Now I also don't need the commentable type and ID uh, to be settable through mass assignment, so I'll remove those. And then I need to go into each of the other models and set the other side of the association, so has many comments. And it's important to specify the as option here as the other name of the association, so in this case commentable. So I'll just add in this line to each of these other models here. So event photos and articles all have many comments as commentable. So with this setup, we can use it like any other has many association. I'll demonstrate it here in the console by grabbing an article, and then I can create a comment through the articles uh, comments association, and I'll just set the content to hello world. Now notice when this was created, Rails automatically set this commentable type attribute to article, so this is how Rails knows which model this is associated with. Now if you want to go the other way and determine which article a comment belongs to, you can't call comment.article because that is completely dynamic. Instead, you can call comment.commentable, and that will return the associated record. So this method could also return a photo or event or whatever other model you might want the comment to relate to. Now that we know how polymorphic associations work, how would we add it to this application? In particular, what if I wanted to do nested resources so in the routes I can pass in articles slash one slash comments and grab the comments for that given article, and the same goes for photos and events. First of all, I'll generate a new controller so that we can have a place to list out the comments. It'll have an index action, and I'll toss in a new action in there as well so that we can have a form for creating a comment. And then I need to change my routes file because I want comments to be a nested resource under articles, photos, and events. So I don't need these generated routes here. And for each of these, I want to append the block here for resources comments and like that. So these routes will direct to the comments controller that was generated. And what I want to do inside of the index action here is to fetch all the comments through whatever the commentable model record is. So this could be an article, photo, and so on. So that'll be our commentable.comments. Now to do this, I need to somehow fetch the commentable uh, record. And for now, I'm just going to uh, do the article directly like this, and I'll work on abstracting this out later. So there we go, fetching it based off of the article ID, which will be passed in through the routes through nesting. And then inside of the view template for this action, I'll just paste in the code to loop through each of the comments and display their content. 
So now when I visit articles one slash comments, I get the comments index action, which shows me that one hello world comment. And I've already done some styling for this off camera. Now what happens when I try visiting a photos comments? And this isn't going to work because it's trying to still find an article even though no article ID is passed in. To fix this, we'll need to make this find in the controller more dynamic. And I'm actually going to move this whole line into a before filter called a load commentable and define it as a private method down here, load commentable. So we need to somehow determine the name of the commentable resource and its ID. And I'm going to do that using request.path and splitting it based off of the forward slash and grabbing the uh, second and third element out of the array. So here, for example, if the path is slash photos slash one, then that will be the two elements used here. Now we can use this to set the commentable instance variable to the resource and we'll singularize it because it's plural and call classify and constantize to turn it into a constant, which we can call find on and pass it that ID. So in the case of a photo slash one path, this would end up converting it to photo.find one, just like we need it. Now, this is the easiest way that I found to do this, but it does introduce a lot of coupling between the controller and the format of the URL. So if you have a custom URL format, you'll probably want to go with a different technique. And I'm going to include an alternative method for this that you might want to use instead. So what this will do is take each of the commentable classes and find one where there's an underscore ID parameter and call find on that passing in that parameter. Now I'm going to just leave this commented out, but you can use the technique that works best for your application. And now reloading this page here, it works. Even though we don't have any comments, the photo slash one comments path will display the comments for that given photo. Next, let's move on to dealing with links. So how would I make a link down here for creating a new comment for this given photo? So inside of the comments list template, uh, let's make a new link here and call it new comment. And now how do we generate the URL for this? Well, if we were to do this directly to a photos comment, then we can call new photo comment path and then pass in the photo instance, which is at the commentable instance variable. Now, obviously we need to support articles and events as well. So this won't work here, but what we can do is pass in an array and rails will generate this call dynamically based off of what you pass in there. For example, in this case, we can pass in an array and say new commentable comment and rails will generate that new photo comment path dynamically or whatever happens to be this commentable object. So reloading this page, we have our new comment link and clicking on it goes to the photos one comments new path, just like we expect. All we need to do here is add a working form for creating a comment. So going into my comments controller, I'm just going to paste in the code to get a form working because it's pretty standard. So first I'm just building a comment through the comments association. And then when it saves successfully, I'm redirecting to the comments index action which I'm using the array technique that I showed in the view to do the same thing where it'll go to like the article comments path or the uh, photo comments path and so on. And then going into the new comment view, I'm going to paste in the code for this as well because it also is pretty standard. It's just a form for editing the comments content. But one key difference here is that when I'm calling form four that I'm passing in both the commentable and comment instances in an array. So this way form four will generate the URLs properly for the polymorphic association. So now when I reload this page for making a new comment, I get the form we created and I can try it out. Click create comment. And there we go. It brings us back to the photos comments path with our comment listed. Now from the user interface perspective, it would probably be better if all of this comment functionality was directly in line on the given model show page. So for example, the article page here, we would like to be able to manage the comments directly below. That's easy enough to do by moving what we created into a couple partials, one for the, the form. And I'll clean this up a little bit because that isn't necessary. And also making a partial for the index template here where we list out the comments and I'll just call it comments. And again, cleaning up that partial. And then I'll need to go into the show template for each of those other models and add in the comment behavior so I can just display the comments and that form underneath it. However, I also need to edit the controller action for this to, to prepare the instance variables for these partials. So inside of the articles controller show action here, I need to set up a commentable instance variable and set it to that article. 
and then I can set up a comments instance variable to list out the comments, and that will be the commentable uh, comments. And also, for making a single comment for the new comment form, I'll just call comment.new for that. So we would just need to specify each of these instance variables, or we could do some renaming and uh, changing of the partials to make it so we don't have to specify as many. And then finally, going into the comments controller, I need to change the redirect behavior when a comment is successfully created to just go directly to that commentable show action instead of this index action. So now let's try this out. Reloading this article, which will now display our comments listed here, and we can also create a comment. Let's try this out and create it. And now it brings us back to this page and adds that comment into the list. It works. So we could easily apply these same steps directly to photos and events to make commenting behavior directly in line. Well, that's it for this episode on polymorphic associations. Thanks for watching.